Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art, and um, I'm going to read more of our book, Poison Power, by Dr. John Goffman and Dr. Arthur Tamplin. We are on Chapter 10, What Can Citizens Do About Nuclear Electricity? Let's see, what can they do? New Sub Chapter, Recommendation for a moratorium on nucle new nuclear electricity plants. I think Dr. John Goffman lost that argument, right? It is undoubtedly clear to the reader by now that the authors of this book have grave reservations about the stampede to nuclear electricity being promoted through the AEC the JCAE, the Joint Commission on Atomic Energy, that's what that is. That means the military. And the, electricity, and the electric utility industry. Wholly aside from the views of nuclear critics, a large and steadily growing citizen concern has developed. The question is repeatedly asked, how can this, how can this madness be checked? Nuclear electricity generation, as it has proceeded up to now, is a classic example of the misuse of science and technology that has brought on our deepening environmental crisis. Let me read that sentence again. That's a freaking awesome sentence. Nuclear electricity generation, as it has proceeded up to now, is a classic example of the misuse of science and technology that has brought on our deepening environmental crisis. Misuse of science. Amen to that. It is a particularly important case in point. It is, it is a particularly important case in point because of the devastating possible consequences for all men and for all time. Uh, I think that's exactly where we're at. Once nuclear pollution has occurred on a large scale, like Fukushima folks, and nuclear electricity generation gives every promise of causing it, there will be no hope of reversing the pollution for hundreds of thousands of years. And that frankly, is the age of fission. That's where we're at. Some gloomy individuals believe we might best let the madness go forward, eliminate the human species, and hope at that at some dimly distant future in the... F that. Gosh darn, let me read that again. Some gloomy individuals believe we might best let the madness go forward, eliminate the human species, and hope that at some dimly distant time in the future, the biological accident that led to the development of the human species in the first place might occur again with a better result. Doesn't that piss you off? A better result. Fuck them. They should just fucking stop nuclear. Better result. Back to the book. Others believe a solution will come by another route, short of obliteration of the human species. Persons knowledgeable in this field predict that a major accident in nuclear electricity generation will occur as a result of the proliferation of nuclear power plants. Fukushima! Fukushima! They believe that before long, such an accident will annihilate the inhabitants of a major city, such as New York or Chicago or Tokyo. That's my, it's not in the book, but I think Tokyo. If such a disaster should happen through a nuclear accident, we would undoubtedly reassess our, quote, need, unquote, for nuclear electricity generation. Not so much. It is a horrifying thought, a major calamity as a route back to a rational approach to electric power generation. However, the Atomic Energy Commission and the Joint Commission on Atomic Energy are still pouring taxpayers' millions into sales promotions devoid of realistic safety considerations. 
tragedy may indeed be the ultimate resolution the problem finds. Are there more reasonable solutions? People in the democratic society such as ours, really, we have a democratic society? Uh, I don't think so since mission accomplished. People in a democratic society such as ours have been taught that the government's role is to protect our inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. No wonder they are perplexed when virtually all branches of the national government operate in a way that seem to deepen the environmental crisis rather than resolve it. Numerous federal agencies operate in a way that either pollutes and destroys the environment directly, as does the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, or they indulge in the excesses of industrial polluters. Congress may pass laws to protect the public, to protect the consumer. But somehow, the very agencies Congress creates to provide the protection almost invariably end up subverting the congressional intent. Mm, mysterious. Cha-ching! Congress put the regulatory and promotional, pollutional, really, agencies together in creating the Atomic Energy Commission. So in this case, even the semblance of a separate governmental agency to protect the public's interest is non-existent. What can the public hope to accomplish by appealing to the Atomic Energy Commission for curbs on the atomic energy? The AEC allows for the public to be heard. Wah, 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 wah. The commission announces formal public hearings prior to the issuance of construction permits and operating permits for nuclear power reactors. In principle, it is possible, therefore, the, for the public to intervene to protest construction or operation of a reactor. Who hears such protests? The Atomic Safety and Licensing Board, selected from a panel appointed by the AEC. Nuclear power advocates dominate membership of this panel. The chances for an unbiased hearing for an, but for an intervening group are clearly imperiled. It is true that some delays can be introduced into the whole system through such intervals, but by and large, the delays are minimal. It is safe to say that if the public relies on open hearings in their fight against nuclear power plants, successive interventions on the next 600 nuclear power reactors will be followed by the construction and operation of the 600 reactors. And I think I'm going to stop there, you guys. I'm dead tired. As you know, I'm on vacation. Uh, it's actually midnight California time, 2 o'clock, wherever it is I am here in Louisiana. So I'm just going to end here. Uh, please do watch my show in the morning. We're going to have a really great interview with Brad Yates, the EFT teacher. I'm super excited. I think it's going to be a really great interview. So put your courage feet on, you guys. I'll read to you tomorrow night, and thanks for listening.